Now, I will not go into the detail. I have kept this uh, presentation very brief. Now, what are the complications? Now, the commonest complication after uh, esophagectomy is uh, uh, pulmonary complication or lung complication. Why? Because remember, we are removing the colon from the mediastinum. Uh, sorry, removing the esophagus from the mediastinum. That is the part between the uh, chest part between the two uh, lungs where the heart rise. So we are creating a new passage through that part and re uh, replacing the thin colon with relatively, of course, we when we uh, do a gastric pull up or when we pull up the stomach, we form a stomach tube, which is uh, very near to the diameter of the esophagus, but still it is larger. So thoracic cavity is not adjusted to that large the new organs. And when we put the colon, colon is of course much larger than the uh, esophagus. So that will create the compression effect on the lungs as well as heart. So your uh, chest capacity goes down and your body has to adjust with that uh, chest capacity. And that is why all the complication occurs. In uh, initial days, uh, even uh, when, uh, when we used to do the uh, esophagectomy, we generally uh, uh, keep the patient on ventilator for say three to four days. Nowadays, practice has changed. We uh, wean out from a ventilator very early uh, because of good uh, perioperative care, but still it remains a problem. When your uh, post esophagectomy patient is drowsy, always suspect CO2 retention. As we will see in the subsequent cases where I have described my own complication in both the cases. Uh, laparoscopic procedures have definitely better chance and they have tend to have uh, lower pulmonary complication, but we cannot completely eliminate it. And the, you should have a very good ICU backup. You should know your uh, uh, post-operative critical care. Uh, it should not be you are just a surgeon. Oh, I have operated and I will forget the patient. It never worked like that. And your uh, intensivist and ICU team should be very efficient in tackling these cases. And sometimes patients do require prolonged ventilation. Uh, uh, now, different type of pulmonary complication. What uh, other type of pulmonary complication? The most common is uh, type 2 respiratory failure, respiratory acidosis, where uh, Carbon dioxide, because the, due to restricted chest capacity, uh, patient is not able to expirate properly and CO2 get uh, retained in the blood. That is the most common cause of uh, type of pulmonary complication. Then, of course, there is the chances of postoperative pneumonia. If the prolonged ventilation is there, there are chances of ventilator-associated pneumonia as in this patient. Uh, lung collapse is very common. And this is also a part of the complication described. And of course, when you do a, such a large surgery, there is always risk of bleeding. Intra-abdominal, intra-thoracic, both bleeding can occur. Uh, but with the improvement of surgical techniques and where, when you train surgeons, bleeding complications, I would say, still can be controlled. Uh, but uh, pulmonary complication are uh, such complication which is generally not in your hand. It depends on patient physiology. Then the next complication, sorry, sorry, sorry. Next complication is that, of course, anastomosis leak and such. You are joining a many tubes. You are joining stomach or colon with your upper part in the neck. Uh, in Ivor Lewis, sometimes you are joining in the chest. And then multiple anastomosis, particularly in when you use the large intestine as your conduit, uh, as we described in the abdomen, whenever you, you do anastomosis, two to three percent chances of leaks are always there. And why we choose the neck for the esophagogastric or esophagocolic anastomosis? Because in the uh, so that we are we want to avoid the leak in the uh, chest cavity or pulmonary cavity because that, those are catastrophic. In cervical region, we can control the leak because most leaks are self-limited. If we observe the patient for significant time, the leaks are going to heal. But issue is during that time, patient should not go into uh, septic shock. 
or uh, infection. That is why we always choose neck at the sites of the anastomosis in case of esophagus and avoid intrathoracic anastomosis. Of course, the abdominal leak can also occur and most leaks are kept conservative where you need to use the drain. In uh, cervical part, you can just, uh, most of the leak because the, it's a low pressure system that comes out. So you can just observe. And, but in abdominal leak, sometimes you need to drain with the use of uh, uh, your intervention radiologist. And also rarely you have to reoperate the patient. So the, uh, this was about the leak. <laughs>